In this tutorial, we're going to talk about uh, time constant, especially with time to steady state, and the fraction amount that we get to steady state with something like a first order plus time delay model, which is a very standard model that relates an input like a step to some kind of response like this. So this would be our input u and our output y. So let's just review this problem statement. We have a process that has a time constant of 5 seconds and a dead time or time delay of 3 seconds. A step change on the process input, delta u, is implemented to change the output by an anticipated amount, delta y. So we want to determine how long it takes from the initial step input to get to a couple of these values here, like 0.5 delta y, 0.9, 0.95, and 1. So let's just review a first order plus dead time model first. So this is the time that the step happens. And I'll just say that's time equals 0. That's when we very uh, first start. And then we wait a certain amount of time. And that is our theta p or dead time. And then we have the dynamic part of this where it gets to the new steady state value. And I'll go ahead and just draw a dashed line here. So it's eventually going to get to this value. And this is going to be our delta y right here. And this is our delta u. So in the first question, it asks us how long till we get to 0.5 of the delta y. Right, so I have it right here. Here's my uh, 0.5 of the way to the new steady state value. Now normally with a time constant, we're always looking at something that is 63.2% uh, of the way there is one time constant. But what happens if it's only 50% of the way there? How much time did that take? Okay, so if it's 63% of the way there, it would just be the dead time, 3 seconds, plus the 5 seconds for one time constant, which would be 8 seconds. So we know that this first one, because it's 0.5, it's going to get there earlier. So this one is going to be less than 8, uh, eight seconds, but we know it's got to be more than the time delay, so we know it has to be more than 3 seconds. Okay, so it has to be somewhere between 3 and 8. But let's just let's use some math to uh, do this. The analytic solution to this is shown here. Here is the equation for a linear first order system. Here is my time delay, here's my time constant, and there's my gain. Now for a step change delta u, we have an analytical solution to this. Okay, so delta u is just a constant value. And here is the solution to that differential equation with delta u constant. Now, if we also add dead time, all that we do is we shift it back by theta p, which is our time delay. And then s of t minus theta p, that's just a time shift. OK, so here is uh, time 0. And if I have a certain amount of time delay, it just shifts it over by theta p. OK, so it shifts it over by that amount. So it's like this s function is 0 or 1. And it just starts the transition from 0 to 1 at a later time. OK, so we can assume for this, after the time delay, that this is just going to be equal to 0 beforehand and then 1 after. So let's just assume that's going to be equal to 1 for our purpose. OK, now we want to be able to calculate how much time elapses to get to 0 0.5 of the steady state value. So what I'm going to do is use this equation right here. And I'm going to plug in when this gets to 0 0.5 times the steady state value, which is 
delta y. And that's going to be equal to kp times delta u times and then 1 minus e to the minus t minus theta p okay divided by tau p okay so here's my equation right here now all I have left is to solve for t so if I rearrange this I'm just gonna say that this I'll just call this my fraction f okay that's the fraction of the way to steady state it's 0 0.5 alright now the other thing I know is just the definition of my gain kp that equals just defining it um, kp equals delta y divided by delta u so I can see that um, these are just going to cancel I don't need to know the delta y I don't need to know the delta u and I don't need to know the kp because it's just defined this way okay and if I plug in kp then those cancel all right so I'm left with I'm left with the fraction of the weight of steady state is going to be equal to 1 minus e to the minus t minus theta p okay divided by tau p all right I'll close the parenthesis all right so if I just solve this algebraically I come up with a solution just solving for t that t is going to be equal to all right so this is going to be equal to theta p minus tau p uh, times natural log all right natural log of 1 minus the fraction to steady state so this gives us the equation uh, just solving it okay for the amount of time for this problem so let's go back to our problem statement now and just apply this okay so we have how long does it take to get from initial step input to get to 0.5 delta y all right I'm gonna go ahead and just use um, Excel for this to calculate it and start up Excel all right and once that starts we'll go ahead and just do this calculation for the different uh, values 0 0.5 0 0.9 0 0.95 and 1 okay new blank workbook and I'll just go ahead and type these in all right okay so this is going to be equal to I'll bring up my formula here on the bottom that we just derived and so that's equal to theta p which is 3 minus 5 times natural log of 1 minus then this fraction I'll make that just a little bit bigger so you can see the formula that I'm typing in after I hit enter okay so there it is and then I'm just gonna fill this down I'll grab a little box in the bottom right and I see how long it takes to get to 0.5 of the way there 0 0.9 0 0.95 and then I have something that may be surprising how long does it take to get to the new steady state value and I have something here that has 1 minus 1 so that's a natural log of zero. So that says it's infinity. Um, so, or sorry, it's negative infinity. And if I have this negative here, it's basically saying it's going to take an infinite amount of time to get there. So let's just go see if that makes sense with this. All right. So we have the amount of time it takes to get to steady state. As we can get closer and closer, we get this exponential decay to this new steady state value but we never 
actually reach it. Okay, the math says we never actually reach it, even though we are practically there. So this value here um, gets very, very small, but never actually equals 1. All right, so that, that's the solution. We have um, these values. We, the first one we said had to be between 3 and 8, and that came out at 6.5. And then you can see to get 90% of the way there, it's 14.5, and 95% of the way there is about 18.